Hi guys, it's Kath. I got some requests for a miniature ironing board tutorial, so that's exactly what I'm showing you today. We're going to make these adorable upholstered ironing boards with foldable legs. This project is so fun and the perfect addition to any dollhouse. Let's get started. First, I grab these giant popsicle sticks. They're absolutely huge at 10 inches long and 1 and quarter inches wide. Take one and measure 4 and a half inches from one end. Draw a line there and cut it out. I just score on both sides with my X-Acto knife and snap the width off. From the middle of the rounded end, draw a curve down and outward to the 1.5 inch length from the top. Curve the top point and add some curves to the bottom corners as well. Cut that out. Go slow here so you don't snap the width. Then I just file down any rough edges for a clean look. There, that's perfect. Now let's upholster it. I grab some thin batting and some no-sew fabric glue. Glue the wood to the batting and cut off the excess leaving about a quarter inch trim around the edges. For the fabric, I'm using this blue plaid piece from my old dollhouse kit. Apply a bit of fabric glue to the batting and press the piece firmly onto the back of the fabric. When it's dry, trim off the excess fabric leaving about a half inch trim around the edges. In order to prevent the fabric from fraying, I'm going to tuck in the edges. Apply some glue and fold the fabric inward. Do this all around the ironing board. Keep in mind that it's best to make a small cut at the corners for a clean look. Once that dries, fold the edges over the wood and glue it down. For difficult corners, I use a binder clip to hold the fabric in place. Once all the glue is dry, this is what you'll end up with. I love the way this padded top looks. Here's one I made with just plain white fabric. Now let's get to work on the foldable legs. For this, I'll be using some round dowels. These are 1 8 of an inch thick and perfect for a project. First, I cut out a 3 4 inch length from one end using an X-Acto knife. Then, with a tiny hand drill, I drill a hole into the center of each end. They don't need to be super deep, I drill about a quarter inch down. Put this aside for now. Then I cut out two 4 inch lengths. Round out one end with a file. This curve will allow the legs to move smoothly when we assemble it. Place this curved end next to the 3 4 inch piece and drill a hole all the way through it until it meets the other piece. Now, take some 20 gauge wire and insert it into the hole we just created. Add on the 3 4 inch piece and snip off any excess wire. See how the pieces can rotate where the wire joins them? Do the same for the other 4 inch length. Now just add a line of wood glue half an inch away from the back of the ironing board and position the contraption in place. Make sure the glue only touches the middle 3 4 inch piece. Cut out a 1 and a quarter inch length from more dowels and glue that to the bottom of the two long pieces. Look how nicely the section swings back and forth. To finish the legs, we need a few more sections of wood dowel. Cut out two 3 and a quarter inch lengths, one 1 and a quarter inch length, and two 1 and a half inch lengths. Set the two tiny pieces aside for now and assemble the three longer pieces into this shape. Then take one of those half inch segments and use it to close off the shape. Take this piece and center it above the other set of legs. Then one and a half inches from the bottom of the first set, drill a hole through both pieces of wood. Do the same for the other side. Now take that last half an inch dowel piece and drill a hole into the center of each end. Place that between the iron and board legs. Using that 20 gauge wire once again, I snip off two 1 3rd inch lengths. Take one and insert it into the hole we drill. I use the back of my X-Acto knife to push it all the way in. There, now these legs are able to fold out and back down for easy storage. As you may have noticed, we'll need a way to keep the legs in place when folded out, so let's do that. Cut out three 1 quarter inch pieces for more dowels. Add three lines of glue to the back of your ironing board and position these pieces in place. You only need one, but I made three so I can make the height adjustable. Last up guys, and it's totally optional. I decided to paint these legs black, but you can totally keep it as wood color or paint it whatever color you like. I kept the legs bare for this white version. And that's it guys. Now you know how to make your own miniature ironing boards with working legs. I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye.